The Dream Chaser space plane, developed by Sierra Nevada Corporation for NASA, is a significant project that has attracted anticipation. However, in today's space industry, this plane might be NASA's biggest mistake. Now, I know it's bold to call it a mistake, but hold on a second and I will explain myself in this video. Before we delve deeper, please make sure to subscribe to our channel for future updates about groundbreaking achievements in the space industry. Initially proposed as a successor to the Space Shuttle, Dream Chaser's design is derived from NASA's HL-20 personnel launch system, showcasing a rich heritage of space plane concepts. The project took a significant step forward in 2010, when Sierra Nevada Corporation was awarded $20 million under NASA's Commercial Crew Development Phase 1 program. This funding was aimed at developing the Dream Chaser, and Sierra Nevada met the program's milestones on time, including hybrid rocket test fires. By 2011, NASA awarded an additional $80 million to Sierra Nevada Corporation for Dream Chaser's development. This funding helped accomplish nearly a dozen further milestones, such as testing an improved airfoil fin shape, integrating flight software and hardware, and conducting a full-scale flight test. One of Dream Chaser's defining features is its high reusability and flexibility, designed to transport crew and cargo to low Earth orbit and be customized for both domestic and international customers. The first space plane named Tenacity is slated to provide a minimum of seven cargo missions to the International Space Station. The Dream Chaser program has faced significant delays, particularly concerning its first International Space Station under mission, which was initially planned for 2021. Issues with the supply chain during the COVID global pandemic were partly to blame for these setbacks. In response, Sierra Space aimed to mitigate these challenges by manufacturing as many components as possible in-house, including thrusters and thermal protection systems. As of November 2023, the first Dream Chaser space plane, Tenacity, was almost ready for its first launch, scheduled for no earlier than March 2024. The vehicle will undergo environmental testing at NASA's Neil Armstrong Test Facility in Ohio ahead of its launch from the Kennedy Space Center. However, critics argue that investing heavily in the Dream Chaser may not be the most efficient use of resources, especially when other reliable options exist and with NASA's budget being substantial. NASA received $25.4 billion, a $1.3 billion increase from the previous year, despite high inflation and rising labor costs. In comparison, the Apollo program successfully landed astronauts on the moon several decades ago, with technology that is now considered far less advanced than what is found in today's smartwatches, and it was accomplished on a significantly smaller budget. Adjusted for inflation, the peak Apollo spending was around $7 billion per year in today's dollars, a fraction of NASA's current budget. This raises questions about the efficiency and direction. Even focusing on the logistical support for the International Space Station, it doesn't make sense why NASA would invest in new projects like the Dream Chaser when SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket offers a proven and cost-effective solution. The Falcon 9 has established itself as a reliable vehicle for both cargo and crew missions to the International Space Station. Only in 2022, SpaceX's Falcon 9 achieved 61 launches. The year 2023 saw an even more impressive cadence with SpaceX carrying out 96 launches of the Falcon family of rockets, which includes both the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. This marked a substantial increase from the previous year. The Falcon 9's 100% success rate in crewed missions stands out, especially given the critical nature of human spaceflight. This record is significant in light of historical tragedies, such as the 1986 Space Shuttle Challenger explosion shortly after takeoff, which resulted in the loss of all seven crew members. The Falcon 9's launch cost, set at approximately $62 million per mission, significantly undercuts the expenses associated with traditional, non-reusable launch vehicles. For comparison, traditional launch vehicles such as the United Launch Alliance's Atlas V can cost upwards of $110 million per launch, depending on configuration and payload requirements. 
Similarly, the European Ariane 5 rocket has seen launch prices in the range of $165 to $220 million. By recovering and refurbishing the first stage of the rocket, SpaceX can significantly reduce the costs associated with each launch. This approach not only saves resources but also allows for a more rapid turnaround between missions. Comparatively, other nations with less budget like China have embarked on more bold and ambitious space missions. China's Lunar Exploration Program, for instance, has achieved significant milestones, including the Chang'e 5 mission's successful collection and return of lunar samples. This marked a historic achievement, as China became only the third country to return samples from the moon. The best chance the United States has against China in the industry lies with SpaceX's Starship. Starship represents a leap forward in space technology, designed to be a fully reusable spacecraft capable of carrying up to 100 passengers on missions to the Moon, Mars, and beyond. This rocket consists of two main components, the spacecraft itself, known as Starship, and its booster called Super Heavy. Both parts are designed to be reusable, with the ability to return to Earth and land vertically, similar to the Falcon 9's first stage. This reusability is crucial for making long-duration space missions more economically viable. For lunar missions, Starship will not require refueling in Earth orbit. However, for missions to Mars and beyond, Starship is designed to be refueled in Earth orbit, a process that will involve launching additional tankers to transfer fuel to the spacecraft before it embarks on its journey. Now, SpaceX is gearing up for the third test flight of its Starship targeting this month. The company has been preparing for this flight by conducting static fire tests of both the Super Heavy booster and Starship upper stage in late December. These tests are part of the corrective actions following the second test flight's mishap, where the Super Heavy booster exploded shortly after stage separation, and the Starship upper stage triggered its flight termination system late in its burn. The third flight aims to build on the experiences and lessons learned from the first two flights. The first and second flights encountered challenges, including a failure during the second flight that led to an explosion shortly after stage separation. These experiences have informed the corrective actions and improvements SpaceX is undertaking to ensure the success of the third flight. The Federal Aviation Administration is overseeing the investigation into the second flight's mishap. The best part, the upcoming third flight is the potential demonstration of propellant transfer technology. This test, if included, would showcase a critical capability for future missions, including those to the Moon and Mars. Propellant transfer in orbit is a key component of SpaceX's vision for sustainable space exploration, allowing vehicles to refuel and undertake longer or more complex missions. The company plans to create a propellant depot in low Earth orbit, filled by a series of Starship tanker launches to fuel the lunar lander Starship for its trip to the Moon. This approach is part of SpaceX's contribution to NASA's Artemis program, aiming for a human landing on the moon as early as September 2026. And that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.